Hi, this video is about the anti-doping codes. So the key knowledge uh, for this area of the outcome is specifically looking at the governing body of anti-doping, World Anti-Doping WADA, and the Australian Anti-Doping Agency, ASADA. So what are the roles and, uh, and, and the rationales behind these two governing bodies to, um, to protect integrity of the sport and to ensure that um, athletes are uh, competing with no doping. This refers to chapter 16. Uh, here's a good little graph that shows um, both the world anti-doping as well as the Australian anti-doping. And any other organisation based in Australia um, ones that are regulated by the Australian Sports Commission or other sporting Australians, they all come under and need to adhere to ASADA anti-doping programs and policies. Uh, and ASADA is also bound by WADA. They are the, the overall governing body. All right, so what is First of all, what is doping? And then we'll look at WADA. What, uh, what is the role that they play in uh, eliminating doping in sport? So doping uh, is either the use of a substance, whether that's a tablet or a um, injection, or a method such as blood doping or, um, what's another one? Uh, using IV. Uh, outside therapeutic or medicinal purposes uh, that's a method that is prohibited so doping is a prohibited either substance or a method aimed at input in improving performance back in um, 1968 the International Olympic Committee first set up some substances that were prohibited since then uh, there's been the establishment of the World Anti-Doping Agency WADA is the international independent body established in 1999 that was responsible for developing the, the, the code and and the code has many layers it's not just about listing prohibited substances but it also um, formulates what constitutes a violation such as trafficking um, performance enhancing drugs. It also um, has systems in place for um, the testing of athletes as well as uh, putting down sanctions so if athletes are caught using performance enhancing substances or methods they can uh, impose penalties on the athlete. Uh, but also a big part of anti-doping is, is educating athletes and the community on, on why, the, um, why the code is set up and, and that's primarily to, to protect the integrity of the sport and also to protect the athlete's right to compete on a level playing field. So what is a prohibited substance? This slide was shown in, um, in the last video. For any substance or method, IV, method or substance, something taken, is classed as being prohibited if it meets any two of these three criteria. It needs to demonstrate that it does actually enhance performance, so it does improve import performance. It could be a health risk to the athlete. Uh, or thirdly, it goes against the spirit of the sport. So for a substance or method to be put on the prohibited list, it has to meet any two of those three criteria points. Uh, it's important to also note that any substance that tries to hide or mask a prohibited substances, that's also prohibited. So here are the, uh, the groups of substances that WADA has listed as prohibited. As you can see, um, anabolic agents, these are a lot of, uh, these are uh, the steroids, the use of um, 
hormones, the same, the similar hormone as testosterone, to improve muscle bulk and get those big muscly, muscly bodies to produce more force, more strength, more power. As you can see, there is um, they are that the most amount of substances come under this category, and that's because it is the most widely used um, drug. Uh, we've looked at better blockers, they slow down the heart rate. Um, these help to reduce inflammation. Diuretics, these help to lose weight and to hide uh, the use of other substances. Stimulants make us more alert. Hormones uh, help with growth and muscle growth and bone. Narcotics, they're the really addictive ones. That's for pain. So if an athlete is suffering from an injury, they'll often take a, a narcotic analgesic uh, to, to relieve pain. But because that uh, in, could impose a health risk and uh, can enhance performance, it's, it's some of them are classed as being uh, prohibited. Okay. All right, so what is a doping violation? Obviously, if you take a, oh, if you take a prohibited substance, then that is a violation of the code. If you are caught with substances in your possession, that's a violation. If you refuse to take a sample, that's a violation. If you do not uh, advise the system that tracks your movements, if you don't advise the governing, like a SADA or WADA, where you will be at certain times for them to take uh, in or out of competition samples, if you fail to do that, you will also, that is also violating the code. Of course, dealing, uh, trafficking, uh, substances is a violation and if you provide or give or assist athletes to take substances then that is also constitutes a violation oops I'm trying to pause all right moving along it's not working So the anti-doping code, I just want to check this is working. Okay, I think I've got it now. So as I was talking about before, there is a system, an online system for athletes to put in their details about where they are and, uh, and this database helps to store data it, uh, it helps uh, organisations to plan testing and to manage and analyse test results. And it's also a place where athletes go to apply for exemptions for therapeutic use. So if they have, say, an injury and they want to take a prohibited substance such as a narcotic analgesic or a particular growth hormone to help them fight a, a, a disease or a, um, an illness, then, uh, then this online system called Adams uh, enables them to do that. So ASADA and 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 WADA they they also are responsible for uh, establishing testing procedures. So the doping controls for athletes it doesn't just occur in competition but also out of competition. It could be here blood, urine samples. These samples are analysed by trained staff who are accredited by WADA. Education and research is a huge part of, of what WADA and ASADA do. It's all about uh, protecting the integrity of sports so that um, athletes can compete fairly and, uh, and and without cheating basically. Um, so here are the, the values that underpin the role and the rationale of WADA. And finally the research element uh, 
which is gaining a lot of media attention recently is the development of a um, of a passport a genetic passport so uh, these anti-doping uh, organizations are finding that the best method to detect um, doping is by formulating an individual gene profile for each athlete and comparing that between in competition and out of competition to that to that gene profile to sp to see if there's been any manipulation so there's lots of research that is also needed because as athletes um, find ways of masking uh, uh, or I should say doctors uh, find ways of masking banned substances uh, the, you know the testing personnel who are responsible for detecting these violations also need to have effective ways to to find out if athletes are using performance enhancing substances or methods okay so moving on to asada oh that's okay we're flashing again right so asada this is the other organization that is listed in your study design key knowledge you need to know the role of both wada and asada so here are some things that you need to know about asada wada was established in 1999 asada was later established in 2006 uh, where wada is an international organization asada is a, is a federal it's it's our country's anti-doping agency uh, america has their own federal anti-doping agency so what does asada do it helps to coordinate and regulate the anti-doping program and it and it is consistent and aligned with the with the code of wada and so what are the three things that um asada's does what are the three roles think of ded dead i know dead spelled d-e-a-d -E but i think of ded detection enforcement and deterrence or dde dead's easy to remember as a little acronym so detection it involves detecting athletes using deterrence this is where education comes in so um, it deters athletes from using illegal substances and a big part of that is educating uh, athletes about the risks associated because that's one of the reasons substances are listed as prohibited because they impose a health could impose a health risk enforcement is uh, is the sanctions where athletes are punished if they are detected using a performance enhancing drug otherwise known as an ergogenic aid so DED detection enforcement and deterrence so there's a few other um, organizations uh, that have developed anti-doping codes one is the Australian Sports Commission they also apply with WADA they work with organizations small big uh, to implement um, the, the code which is all about protecting the integrity of the sport ensuring the players can play fairly and um, yeah and many of their um, rationales are, are all very much aligned here you can see uh, FIFA they actually a long long time ago well before even the um, IOC they introduced uh, some doping codes in 1970 and then of course took on the uh, the WADA code in 2009 and uh, same sort of thing they're looking at the ethics of the sport the, the spirit of the sport ensuring that uh, athletes you know uh, are safe in terms of their health and that everyone is on a level playing field that um, there's fair and equal opportunity for all competitors gymnastics Australia uh, you know they also have a strong anti-doping policy that is all based on respect and fairness safety and responsibility and they also um, look to detect deter 
and prevent doping in uh, in Australian gymnastics. AFL, they have not only an anti-doping policy, but they've also have an illicit drug policy. Uh, they again adopt the wider list of prohibited substances and anyone involved in the sport, any stakeholder, needs to abide by the code. And, um, and the AFL also impose their own sanctions for violating that code. And as you can see, um, similar to the, you know, the gymnastics and the FIFA, it's all based on fairness, protecting the players, educating uh, the players, and, uh, and condemning the use of performance enhancing substances. And they do that through sanctions. All right, last slide. This is um, a program that is used by Sports Medicine Australia, which is a huge organisation, and, uh, and they also are aimed at supporting community-based sports and clubs uh, to help educate and, um, yeah, yeah, about educating the community. Okay. Good night.